The first step, and for many of us the most difficult, is to get something, something, down on that blank sheet of paper. Number 1. Set down the procedure, the steps necessary to accomplish the production, the goals. Heading the list is the need to establish your objective or objectives. What is the purpose? What is the message you wish to communicate to your audience? It might include one or more of these, or others. Number 2. It is essential to determine your target audience to establish the level and manner at which the information will be presented. Consideration should be given here to the possible ultimate transfer to video. Number 3. Prepare an outline of material to be covered. Number 4. Prepare a written script or narration. Number 5. You must decide at this point, or possibly before completing the script, the physical format, the combination of projectors, screens, and audio equipment you will utilize for this presentation. First, the single projector and screen. This combination offers important advantages. It is by far the simplest to produce and to present, which is important. It's easy to modify, add to, subtract, rearrange slides, etc. It is least costly in equipment, production, and setup time. It may be presented manually, orally, or with the sound and sync tracks. The big disadvantage, however, is that the screen goes blank between each slide, thus interrupting the continuity or destroying the mood, and this is an important shortcoming. Second, two projectors, one screen. Possibly the best combination for most presentations. This eliminates the dark screen problem with continuous screen images with dissolve or fast switching. Montages or simple motion flashing may be possible. This format can usually be easily modified for transfer to videotape. The biggest disadvantage is that modifications to the sequence may be difficult since the slide succession alternates between projector trays. Two projector, two screen presentations are sometimes used for comparative side-by-side -side images. Third, three or more projectors on one screen. This has the advantage of very flexible, smooth montages or superimpositions, such as a title over dissolving images. Motion effects are possible with associated programming equipment. A disadvantage is that it usually requires somewhat sophisticated equipment and is difficult to run manually. Fourth, multiple projectors and screens, three to twenty-four or more projectors and multiple screens. The advantages include impressive panoramic scenes, sequential changes across screens, motion effects. They can produce practically seamless white images on a large screen. Disadvantages. It naturally requires very costly and sophisticated production and presentation equipment. Computer programming is essential for larger productions. Often, a trained operator may be required. A simple glitch may throw a whole program into chaos. Wide formats are not suitable for transfer to video. Back to our basic considerations. Number six, search for appropriate existing slides or visual materials from your own slide library from historical societies or museums, etc. Number seven, visit sites and photograph scenes and activities which depict the concepts identified in the script. Number eight, assemble the slides in sequence with the script. Number nine, record the narration, music, sound, etc., and mix down to the final audio track. Now, before we go into the hardware and the mechanics of putting all this together, let me say something about the most important, but elusive, aspect of the project. Perhaps we could call it the human factor. Why are you doing it? You want to communicate something to other people. You have a feeling, a drive, or you want to tell a story, or simply to express an idea. You must do it, to connect what's inside you with your audience. This is your inspiration for writing the narrative, for selecting the pictures, the music, and the sound. Number 10. Our last goal was to assemble the slides and synchronize them with the audio track, a simple statement for a big job. 
First, mark the script with the slide change marks. Additional notations may be helpful to keep in sync. This is vital while taping the synchronization, as well as for manual or oral presentation. This script was originally for manual projection of a four-projector, three-screen show. Many people find a storyboard very helpful in visualizing, through sketches, the final appearance on screen. Especially useful for multi-image shows. If the presentation is to have an audio track, the first consideration is to select a narrator with a good radio voice who can communicate in words and inflection, a visualization of the script. This may well be best realized by using your own voice, even though it may not be professional, but you do have the feeling for the subject. Selection of the musical background, or foreground, depends upon many considerations and some restrictions. Most important, I feel, is your own musical taste and the moods you have expressed in your presentation. If this is an artistic production, you should express your integration of pictures and sound to satisfy your own creative talents and trust that others will appreciate it. Otherwise, you keep your targeted audience in mind. Music and sound can be a very important part of a presentation. Sometimes, rather than a musical background to the slides and narrative, the music may predominate being accompanied with slide images selected to complement the musical phrasing. Often, appropriate sound effects may add a rich texture or atmosphere to the audio mix. Back to our basic considerations. After collecting three or more times the number of slides you'll use, lay them out on an illuminated panel or light table. This helps to compare slides and to select the most suitable images for each point in the script. Use only the sharpest, clearest slides. Attempt to include complementary colors in each image where practical. Within limits of the script, try to vary the overall colors and contrasts of adjacent slides to avoid monotony. You might show an overall view, then come in for a close-up. To hold interest, slides should be on the screen generally no longer than 3 to 8 seconds, unless the narration is describing something specific within the image. Do not describe each slide. Let the images carry the story whenever possible. The less narration you can use, the better. A little music would add impact here. A lecture or program may be presented orally, as I'm doing right now, or a recorded soundtrack can accompany the slides. A simple stereo cassette recorder can provide a monaural audio track and a slide synchronizing signal track. This rather sophisticated four-channel mixer is an ideal tool for mixing down separate narration, music, and soundtracks from microphone, tape, or record to a stereo composite audio track plus a signal which will enable the projectors to operate automatically in synchronization. Here's a three-channel recorder for the same purpose to control slide changes and or variable speed dissolves. 
A programmer such as this is required to produce the sync signal. This one is made to handle two projectors. Here's one which will control four projectors. This control programmer will accommodate up to eight projectors. Each control dissolves between a pair. Some will accommodate up to 24 or more projectors. For these, computer programming is essential. A word about titles or captions. This is a slide copy of an artist's original. Photographing graphics from a computer screen, this is not one, provides unlimited possibilities. Movie title letters on a color print. On a projected slide. Change the projected slide. Quick and sloppy caption scratched into the dampened emulsion of an underexposed slide. I have a lot of them. Another with colored cellophane.